In this video, you're gonna learn how to set up option 2 and option 3 from scratch. These two options are very similar. The setup is almost exactly the same. The only difference in the setup is one single attribute that we add to the FinSuite cookie consent script. So you might be thinking, why are we having both of these options? What's the difference between them? The only difference between option 2 and option 3 is when do the cookies get loaded onto the user's browser? With option 3, opt out of cookies, cookies get loaded as soon as the user lands on our site. Then, if they click the accept button, nothing happens, they just close the cookie consent. On the other hand, if they hit the deny button, we remove the cookies from the user's browser, or the script removes the cookies from the user's browser. On the other hand, with option 3, no cookies get loaded up front. Only if the user accepts cookies, then cookies get loaded onto the user's browser. Note that option 2, opt out of cookies, is not GDPR compliant, and option 3 is GDPR compliant. So you might be thinking, why then would anyone use option 2? And here's the thing, with option 2, you will have more statistical data about your website visitors, because you'll start collecting data about the website visitors as soon as they land on your site. With option three, many times the users will simply deny the cookies and you will have no information about that user whatsoever. You won't even know that someone landed on your site. The setup for options two and three is a little more complicated than setting up option one. Still, if you follow along, this is going to be a breeze. Our setup has four simple ingredients. Creating the UI components, adding attributes to our components, adding attributes to our script tags to turn them off and on based on the user's preferences, and adding the FinSuite cookie consent script. Without further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna start by adding a div block to our body. And I'm going to set the position to fixed. First, I'll give it a class of cookie consent wrapper. And I'm going to set the position here to fixed. Now, I'm going to select full here because I want it to span across the whole screen. Okay. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this component will hold all of our components that will add to our cookie consent. So the preference. Uh, selection component, the manager, as well as the cookie banner. In this tutorial, we're just going to focus on the cookie banner. So I'm going to add our div inside of that. And here I'm going to give it a class of cookie banner. And you'll notice here that I'm inside of the cookie consent wrapper. And here I place this component. Now, with the cookie banner, I don't have to set the position to fix necessarily because it's already inside of a component that has position fixed. So I can simply set the position to absolute and I'm gonna add it to the bottom right corner. Here, I wanna add 48 pixels of padding and a margin of 48 pixels as well. There we go. I'm going to set the background color to white. And I'm going to give it a box shadow so it pops out from the background a little bit. I'm going to set this to 30. This to 25. And let's not use white. Let's use a blue color because in the last tutorial I used white already. So something that matches with the rest of the color palette. Okay, this looks kind of good. Okay, and we'll set the font color to white. Inside here, I'll add a heading. Okay, this is going to be our heading. And below that, I'm going to add a paragraph. Okay, and again, I'm just going to copy the text from our 
example on the cookie consent site. Right now, I'm going to head over to the example in our documentation and I'm going to use this text over here because I'm too lazy to write my own. Now, you'll notice that we have three buttons here. We have the preferences button, the deny button and the accept all button. Now, the preferences button is something that's optional. We do not have to add this uh, in order to make option two and option three work, but it's something that we can add. And uh, this will serve as the foundation for our next tutorial where I'm going to show you how to set up the preference manager. Uh, of course, if the user clicks the deny button, cookies get denied. And if they click the accept button, cookies get accepted. Okay, so let's head back to our Webflow example and paste this in here. Now, this is spanning from left to right, and I don't really like it. So I'm going to reduce the max width here to 600 to 768 pixels. And here we're not having enough contrast with the background. So let me change this up a little bit. I'm going to add a bit of a darker blue here, and I'm going to turn this link color into um, a yellowish color where we have enough contrast. There we go. Let's say I'm happy with this. Now here we're going to add our buttons at the bottom. So I'm going to add a div that's going to hold our buttons. And inside of the div, I'm going to add our buttons. So I'm going to add a button and I'm going to give it a class of button. Like this. And here I want to make the corners round. So I'm going to give it a ridiculous radius number like 45, I think this is gonna work. Then I'm gonna increase the padding on the left and the right a little bit. Let's say 32 pixels. And this is going to be our primary button. So I'm gonna give it a color of black. Okay. Maybe a little lighter. Okay, this works. I'm gonna write accept all. Then I'm going to add a secondary button that's going to say deny. So I'm going to give it a combo class of secondary. And here I'm going to give it a margin of 16 pixels. And I'm going to change the color to, it's going to be transparent. And I'm going to add a black border like this. Uh, actually, I won't add a border, I will add an inner shadow. So it doesn't mess up the dimensions of our button. We'll set this to zero, this to zero, and this to two pixels. I'm going to write deny inside. And we're going to have a third button for the preferences where I'm just going to call it button link. All right. And here I'm going to add also 16 pixels and I'm going to remove the black background color. I'm going to set this to transparent and we could also underline this like so, so it matches the design of this link. And here I'm going to write preferences. Okay, and our component is basically done. Now that we created our components, it's time to give the elements some attributes to give them superpowers. First, we're gonna select the cookie banner component and we're gonna give it an attribute of FSCC with a value of banner. Then we're gonna select this button over here and we're gonna give it an attribute of FSCC with a value of allow. On the deny button, we're going to add an attribute of FSCC with a value of deny. And on the last button, we're going to add an attribute of FSCC with a value of open preferences. And we're going to hit save. And that's it. 
this cookie banner would work out of the box. However, it would fall apart and it would look different than what we created here because display flex gets applied to the cookie banner by default, which means that our cookie banner would look on the live side like this. If you ever get this error, make sure to set the display of the cookie banner to flex and set it up here however you want. For example, I'm going to set this to direction vertical and I'm going to align it to the left and I'm going to save it like that. Now, one more thing, what we can do here is select this cookie banner and hide it so it doesn't bother us here when we're designing our page. Next, we can select the outermost component of our cookie consent, this cookie consent wrapper over here, and we can save this as a symbol. We can call it cookie consent. Okay. And what this allows us to do is reuse the symbol over and over again and add it to the pages really fast later on. All right. So the last thing that we're going to do now is head over to our project settings and add the attribute of type equals FSCC to all of our cookie issuing script so that we can turn them on and off depending on the user's preferences. If the user clicks the deny button, we want to remove or turn off all the cookie issuing scripts. And if the user clicks the accept button, we want to turn on all the cookie issuing scripts. So let's head over to our project settings. Once we are in our project settings, we're going to click on custom code. And here we have our Google Analytics script. Now, what we have to do with this script is add fs, uh, sorry, type equals quotation marks. And inside here, we're going to write fs cc like this. And what this signals is that this script has to be turned off if the user denies the cookies. And the last thing that we're missing here is our FinSuite cookie consent script. So we're going to head over to the FinSuite documentation and all the way here at the bottom, we have this script under step five. So we're going to copy this and we're going to head back to our Webflow project. Here, we're going to paste this at the top and the difference between option two and option three can be set right here. If you write opt out, we are using option two. And if we write opt in, we're using option three. All right, let's hit save and let's publish our site. Once our site is published, we can see here that our cookie consent is working just as expected. If we close it and we refresh the page, our cookie consent is not showing up anymore. Let's recap what we just learned. In step one, we created a cookie consent UI in Webflow. In step two, we added attributes to our elements. In step three, we added attributes to our scripts that we want to turn on and off depending on the user's preferences. And in step four, we added the FinSuite cookie consent script to our custom code section. And that is how you build an FinSuite cookie consent. Thanks for watching. Check out more FinSuite videos to keep learning Webflow.